I've been shooting the black powder guns for quite some time and always use some kind of a lubrication such as the bore butter commercial products or something I mixed up myself or the uh, lubricated felt felt wads again those are, are are made up but point is here I've always used something like this because I felt without that um, chain fires would, could occur you know this is the kind of things we get in the literature or got in the literature years back and also to keep the falling soft because um, that's uh, supposedly going to give us a lot better accuracy so like I say we've always used some kind of a lubrication here the bore butter or the uh, the lube here would be on the end of the end of the chambers after you um, insert the insert the ball and the things like the fell wads go on top of the powder and then you insert the um, ball on top of that so like I say we've always shot that way but decided last summer here 2021 maybe we should try something with uh, try some shots without using any kind of lubrication only loading powder and then the ball um, on, on top of that and we did that with uh, 1858 Remington here actually a copy of an 1858 close to one done by by Pieta and I chose this gun because I like the sights on it I like the sighting system I also have this pretty well zeroed in to um, you know, hit where I'm, I'm aiming so this is the gun that we used so what we'll do here is um, I'll wind the clock back a little bit and and we're going to take a look and, and see what we ended up with for results we shot um, I believe it was three targets six shots in each target when we didn't use any lubrication at all and then we shot um, again three targets or 18 shots when we're using uh, lubrication those are done at, at 20 21 yards off a, off a rest and um, we'll take a look here and see what we did I want to add to this that uh, things could get kind of lengthy here in the video I may have to break it in the in the two parts and I'm sure it can get boring some folks that, at, at times but there's always the chance here you can skip to the to the conclusions right off but I think if you do that you should um, kind of keep in mind that you're probably missing some of the uh, points in here so if you tell somebody about the results that you you've drawn out of the thing they may not be totally correct if you've missed some of the uh, other points that were in the video so I want to encourage people to um, at least uh, watch most of it before you um, get into any kind of debates or, or jump to some conclusions about one thing or the other and I'm not trying to make any conclusions really myself here except want to present this as as informational and um, let let you know let folks kind of decide themselves what what they think after they've seen the seen the results so all right let's get out there and or go back there I should say and and, and run some of that video I've got a really nice day here middle of July in the shooting range I can usually shoot uh, two inch, sometimes one and a half inch groups, 20, 21 yards with this gun. So I'll get some idea after a number of shots of whether or not that shooting without using any kind of lubrication is causing any decrease in accuracy. I will check the barrel periodically to see what kind of following is going on down there. I probably stop shooting if I see that the group size is significantly increasing. And as I'll be shooting with no lubrication or wads, I won't be getting any protection from flashovers, so I'm just going to load one cylinder at a time, shoot that, and then every time have to reload. I know there are some folks out there that believe that the uh, chain fires are mostly caused from coming across from one, one nipple area to the other, especially if your nipple drops off here, but I've also read where and heard where folks actually um, are getting chain fires the other direction, so we're not taking any chances here, we're just going to load one at a time. And we're going to use a Lee 451 round ball. Uh, these are made, of course, of pure lead. And we'll be shooting our Triple F Go X. We're going to use 25 grains of this. In most cases, when I'm loading, I remove the cylinder and, and use a loading press like this. But this case, we're going to use the actual loading level that's on the gun, and we're only loading one at a time. I'm using number 10 Remingtons for caps on the gun, and also a crony down here to see if our velocities are changing or how they might be changing as the cylinders, the chambers in the cylinder fall up and also the barrel. Okay, so we've rammed the first one down and we can see a little ring of lead even though that's a 451 round ball that's formed around there. We can't trust that necessarily to block the fire from the adjacent cylinder, so like we say, we're only loading one at a time here. Well, I've got our Kona turned on. Give us some velocity readings maybe, speed readings actually. Our capper up and I'm kind of excited about this because I've always done what I've 
read and stuff. I mean, I go back far enough so that there was no internet or... But I don't go back as far as when they... They were still printing stuff. I don't go back that far. Okay, let's get the cylinder turned around so our first shot should go off. You're back kind of slow. As I was saying here, I've always shot with a method that would produce best accuracy from what I read, and I was always to use wads or lubed or something, but maybe, maybe that's not all necessary. It's kind of why we're excited here to find out what's going on. Of course, I couldn't throw my shots. Well, that'd be cheating and I'd be eliminated from the competition then, I suppose. Okay, here goes the first one, I think. And the smoke clears and we've got a reading of 694 on the chrono. And I think we got a lower 5 o'clock shot off the black. Alright, let's load her up again. All right, we load up our second chamber. We're capped and ready to fire that. Should mention here, I don't dry fire anything because I don't use that much oil lubrication after cleaning the gun. Like I've never really needed that. I suppose if I was in competition, I might snap five or six, but they're getting hard to find right now. Well, that one felt okay. Here's number two. Set our cameras off and. Save on our batteries. Well, I almost forgot that second shot came out at 727. Something to note, and I'm going to load each, each of the chambers. I'm not using the same chamber every time, so we're going kind of around the horn here on that. Okay, speed-wise, 767, and that one went about 11 o'clock. Let's see if we can swing over on, on that distraction that's going on out here. Yeah, there he is. Or she is, whatever. Anyway. That shooting doesn't seem to bother him too much. I've had him here before on the range. All right, let's go back to target. Okay, the third shot was 767 for speed. And a couple things I want to mention that um, I took the barrel Took the, took the cylinder out and looked on the barrel and yeah, it had a coating of black on it, but not real ugly. You know, there were no big gobs or anything in there, so just kind of a, a black coating throughout the barrel. That's what we found there. Remembered what I thought of here, and that's that using this loading lever on this, and I'm going all the way down on that. I'm feeling a little compression, but nothing extra, so 25 grains would be Pretty much minimum you'd want without a, a wad or something else in there, otherwise you might not get compression on the powder. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah, that might be a little bit low. 742 on the chrono. And a nice thing about the Remingtons when you want to check the barrel like I did on after the third shot was that on the cold style you're going to have to reset your barrel wedge and that possibly could um, mess up your group size a little bit or change where it's where it's hitting. With this one on the solid frame thing that's not going to be the case. Okay here comes our shot number five. I think we got that black square kind of surrounded. Sure where that one went. Oh, left. Yeah, we're down to at about seven o'clock, maybe two inches off the black, and 738 speed wise.
Well, that fifth shot, I'm not sure it wasn't me, but I'm a little suspicious about it being that far from the, out of the group. Well, like I say, that could just be my aiming here, sight picture. There's number six, coming in 741. Well, we're set up for a second string of six, and we're going to show the targets afterwards here because that way we haven't got to switch our cameras around. I wasn't real impressed with the group die size there. I want it real bad, but seeing that can I've shot better than that before. Anyway, let's get this one downrange and see where this goes. Seems like that ball went down a little tougher this time down the chambers, but. That wouldn't change any because we're not using lube on the barrel. Oh, that don't belong there. And I squeezed that one off pretty decent. That should be within an inch or so of the black, I would think. Well, we got seven. 40, if the smoke clears here, I got 749 on that shot. I don't know if you're just plinking or having fun and one flies off like that first shot did, I think. Not a big deal. Maybe the next three or four will land right in the black. But your target shooter, that shot down there could put you right out of the competition. You won't be in the winner's circle. Wow. Again, that baby should be right up there by the black. But it isn't. Seven, four, three. Well, I usually use lube on the end of the chambers. And even though they won't get back in where the uh, black powder is igniting, what it will do is allow me to seat that ball a whole lot easier, I'm finding out, because these things, I really have to work that floating lever to get these things to, to seat down. Of course, everything's so greased up when I'm using that lube that... All right, let's see where this one goes. Looks like about nine o'clock, just on the edge of the paper. Oh, 840. And that wasn't because I used any extra powder either. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. If I was going to call that shot, I'd have called it a 10. And actually an X. And there it is. Okay, that's number four, and it came in at seven, 776. Well, a couple of things here. I'm now starting to notice that the cylinder is rotating a little tougher. And that lube is not in there doing everything, so. And also, I was afraid I was gonna bend the loading lever on that last one. It really went down tough on this one. I'd call that another 10x. I'm not sure where that one went. All right, that fifth shot was 819, and it was right on the black. So I guess we called that one, and turns out that's where it is. That felt good too. All right, that last shot was 759. That was the sixth shot, actually number 12, with no luber or wads in the gun. Well, there's sure no complaining on them last three shots. They were right into the black. I think all three of them touching. Okay, this would be the 
third string, so this is shot number 13, lucky 13. And I'll tell you, if I was shooting a 454, I don't know how I'd get them down the cylinder. These 451s, I almost thought I got to take the cylinder out and use my hydraulic ram press. I felt like a 10. Is that in the black or where is that be? Got touching the black on the top. Well, before we forget that shot number 13 was 799. I had a little better luck getting this one down. I didn't hesitate, I just kept follow through on the ramming process. That should be another one right in the black. I believe it is. Okay, that one didn't ram down too easy either. I'm afraid I'm going to bend my barrel what it takes to get those things seated. And they're shooting like wild, man. That was a 795, in case I didn't record it. I'm shot number 14. That one might have felt just a little low when it went off. But I wouldn't believe it. That shouldn't be that far out. That felt pretty good. Okay, that fourth shot was 806. I know I didn't mention that. And this cylinder is getting a little tougher. The last shot was right, right where you'd want it to be. I didn't want to break, so start over here. Out pretty decent. And shot number five comes in 826. Well, here we're up with six, the final sixth shot, and it will be the sixth shot because I had to set the butt of this gun down on a chair. I think I pulled two muscles and put all my weight I got on that loading lever to get that one down. I do see a hole up there at the top of the target, which don't belong there. I'm not sure which shot that was. That would be a typical flyer that that can happen if it doesn't take the rifling, I think. That felt pretty decent too. That might be back in our group, I'm thinking. Okay, that one is 817. I'd rather get out of the barrel because I really had that thing jammed down the chamber. It was tough. And here's the first target that we shot 21 yards, 451 Lee, round ball, 25 grains of 3F Go X. No lube or wad, just the 3F black powder and the Lee round ball. And it's about a three and a quarter inch group for the six rounds that we shot. And second target, again same deal, and we had three in here within a one inch group. And we have some, what we think would be flyers. Of course it could have been sight alignment or something else, but I believe those are flyers out there. And third target, uh, you know the spread here about six, five and a half inches, but we have four shots in this center section here that measured just a tad under an inch. I actually think this is maybe where the thing is capable of shooting when it doesn't uh, strip the riflings when the ball actually has its stability. But it's also likely then that these shots were not sight alignment or not my my problem. They may have actually been flyers caused by the round ball not actually catching the catching the riflings and therefore not stabilizing as it went down range. As I've said I've never done this before, shot 15, really any without any kind of lube or, or wads or anything, and I'm amazed at the black stuff that came out of this barrel. And the rag thing here on the end of our cleaning patch, and just cleaned the barrel so far, and that's the color of the water that 
that this thing was uh, that this thing generated not to mention that black spill down there and what came out of the barrel here so new experience and never seen anything like that before in cleaning these guns well, this video got kind of long when we were showing shooting the gun with uh, without using any any felt wads or any lubrication just using the powder powder and the and the round balls so we'll need to break this up into a second second part where we're going to shoot uh, 18 shots again three cylinders and this time we're going to use the, the lube here on the end of the chambers and we'll also show at the end of this this section the uh, results we got with our chronograph or both uh, methods of shooting and we're also going to compare you know compare targets group size and and uh, maybe we'll find out whether or not this gun will shoot any different with the lubrication as far as not giving us those shots that we kind of think maybe we're we're flyers so you know, hopefully you'll check out the second um, second section, and we'll show you how the gun is shooting with um, with uh, lubrication.